India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Multi Roswell Studios. Yesterday was crunching. It was absolutely a crunching fall. Can we do a little better? I think that's the best we can hope for. Uh, some stability is what is very much required. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Multi Roswell Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleague Surbi and Nigel. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, morning. Uh, yeah, folks, I mean, uh, the fall now is what, about 7% from the peak. So at some point, the buyers will start coming yeah. in. It's just a question of when. Uh, and I hope uh, the margin, we stop falling. I mean, I think that's yeah. the yeah. first yeah. requirement. And then we can uh, look for some stability and some uh, turns, etc. But, you know, uh, for the last couple of days, even on Friday when we had the 300-point surge on Monday morning, I mean, it didn't, uh, and we, we sort of discussed this, it didn't look like this was a market which was uh, going to turn right back on, it was looking slightly weakish because of a multitude of factors. The big context, of course, apart from everything new which is happening in terms of the consumption slowdown, et cetera, is the fact that everything is up. I mean, most, so many stocks are up 100%. They're doublers this year in 2024 after having a fantastic pr past two years as well. So that's the context here. In the uh, you know, and that's the backdrop which is very important to remember. Even as you pass through, what is the dominating driver? Is it a consumption slowdown? Is it X Y Z? The basic fact is stocks are stocks were priced to perfection uh, and beyond in some cases. So that's essentially the fall from the all-time highs. Nifty is down about seven percent. Nifty Bank is down about six percent. The mid-cap index eight percent. The small-cap index down about eight percent as well. So this is the fall from the all-time highs. Now. Uh, sort of, uh, let's tell you some of the factors uh, at play now as we start this morning. As, as we said, crunching fall in markets yesterday, the small cap index was down 4%. Now, that's, uh, we don't see a 4% fall on uh, the broader markets, uh, but we did see yesterday, tennis to one was how much declines outnumbered advances. Uh, so it was kind of a one-way street, really, and you really had to struggle to find, uh, you know, big volume-led gainers yesterday. I mean, there were about three or four, and we'll talk more about that as we go along. Yields continue to remain strong. Now, uh, the 10-year was up just one basis point, but basically it's holding on to the 4.2 odd level. Dollar index has moved past the 104 levels as well. Uh, and uh, this is a point that people are making as we get closer to with the elections in the US and as the market gets more certainty that Donald Trump is ahead, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, US exceptionalism in that sense, which uh, will push these uh, things up. Now, oil prices, 2% uh, pop, 75.65. So you've essentially got yields, dollar and oil, all which are slightly higher and equities, which are absolutely flat. Actually, nothing very much in terms of US equities at all. Gold prices, they are, by the way, flirting uh, with uh, 2750 kind of levels. They were up another 1%. So gold prices, I mean, if there is a rate cut cycle which is going to ensue, uh, gold uh, perhaps go, uh, goes uh, even higher. We'll see. Uh, so, we uh, sort of tie this up with levels here on the, uh, as far as the market is concerned. Uh, many indicators, like the case was on Friday morning and Thursday morning, many indicators on the Nifty at least are approaching what you would describe as oversold levels. But the fact is, the Nifty price action doesn't suggest that there is a reversal, uh, which is around the a big reversal, which is around the corner, or a durable reversal, which is around the corner. And the basic reason is, that we are still below daily and hourly moving averages. You essentially need to uh, get past and get above some of these levels uh, for, uh, for us to hope for any kind of uh, move up. Immediately on the downside, the level to watch is 24214. Uh, we left off at 24472, so not very far away, 200, low, 200 points away. That's the daily lower Bollinger Band. We'll see if the market, work, uh, the, if the Nifty works its way through down to those levels in terms of what the uh, what, what levels under that uh, are going to be. Uh, on the way up, of course, it's the 40 hourly exponential moving average, which, is which now stands at 24,800, which is, again, not very far away, about a percent and a half. Uh, but uh, we need to do that for some semblance of stability to start to come back. The Bank Nifty, uh, at the day's high, like on Monday, it tested the 20-day moving average and then saw selling pressure. Uh, on the downside, the near-term levels are 51,000. And then you get to the recent sort of uh, lowest point, which is 50,194. 
Again, both are pretty close by to where we left off yesterday, which is 51,257. And in the way up here, the markers, which the, Nifty, the bank Nifty needs to climb above, the 40-day 40, uh, 40 exponential, which is 51,827, and the 20-day moving average, which is 52,141. I mean, at the margin, the uh, silver lining perhaps is the fact that, you know, there are a few earnings, at least as we sort of start this session, which are also good. I mean, it's not all bad. We'll talk more about those earnings as we go along. But otherwise, it's a pretty flattish picture, maybe a little adversarial on a day-on-day -day basis for global markets. Uh, but the market here, of course, navigating some tough times. Sorry. Absolutely, Prashant. And you know, what's kind of rubbing salt on wounds is I was looking at the Japanese market. Mm. The headline there is uh, <clears throat> the subway operator, right? Tokyo Metro. Yeah. Uh, it's a huge, huge sort of listing as well, yeah. about $2 billion. And that one's popped 45%. Yeah. We here in India had the big Hyundai listing and it tanked along with the rest of the market. So I, it's just, you know. I think that's the biggest hype they've seen in the last six years. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, it, I, no comparing apple to oranges, but in terms of, when, you know, look at headlines coming through. Hyundai lists in India, shares tying 7% on debut, and there's, you know, a large listing out of Japan, which is flying away 45% higher. But anyway, I mean, we... Misery we, loves company, huh? Sorry? Uh, misery loves company. Misery we loves, don't have company. We don't have company. That's the problem, yeah. So, I mean, uh, to uh, cut the long story short, basically, some of the markets around Asia are doing quite okay. <laughs> Uh, Hong Kong, uh, you know, is up and about. China is up and about. Japan's not doing too bad. Let's talk about what's going on over here. Yesterday, you know, all, all kinds of levels were broken. So 100 DMA uh, gone last week's low gone. The question is, where does this really end? And it's uh, the combination of these twin factors, no let up in FBI selling and the fact that earnings have been really all over the place. It's not turning out to be a good season, at least so far. Now, on the FBI selling bid, yesterday's number was again around 4,000 crores. Uh, domestic institutions were offsetting that as usual. That's the trend that we've seen. Uh, 5,800 crores of buying coming in from domestic institutions. But it's, it's clearly not enough, as there's a lot of stock churn going on. Let's quickly come to the numbers, because that's where the additional painful uh, headlines or the additional painful information is really coming in from. If you look at post-market results, now, this whole asset quality issue is really showing up for not just banks, but NBFCs as well. Look at, you know, uh, Bajaj Finance, the, the margin picture, the AUM growth picture is fine. But even a company like Bajaj Finance is talking about slightly higher credit costs. And, you know, the question is what happens from here, if it's speaked out or not. That's what the management has been uh, sort of guiding for. m and Finance, I mean, look at what we've seen, uh, seen yesterday, sharp rise in provisions. The credit cost on a year-on-year -year basis has moved from 2.5 percent, uh, from 1.5 percent to 2.5 percent. Guidance has been cut by the NBFC as well. ICICI Pro has missed the mark on several parameters. Shoppers stop. EBITDA has fallen. Uh, you know, at a net uh, net level, the loss has widened to 20 crore. So none of this is sort of being very comforting. But but let's not get too negative. There are the bright sparks here and there as well. Amber would be one of them. Persistent has come out with very good numbers, good growth. And let's not forget Zomato. The whole profitable journey, the whole story continues, the scale-up continues, and those you know numbers, the internals on the quick commerce business are looking really, really solid for Zomato. So it's a mixed bag, but yes, it is more negative than positive. That is something we can't hide away from. Just leaving you with today's major numbers. Uh, Lever, very, very important to see what Lever says uh, with the whole focus on uh, you know rural and, and FMCG, Bajaj Finsurf, Pedilite, there'll be SBI Life, uh, United Spirits and, uh, and TVS Motors. So plenty of numbers. Hopefully some of them will light up some cheer. Well, that's right. You know, and overnight, the queues that are stacked up against us are the three top indicators that we look at. The dollar index was stronger. The yields moved up uh, a little bit. And also, you did see that, uh, you know, overnight Brent crude prices didn't cool off. We're back at around $76 uh, per barrel. So all these three montrables not in favor of the bulls as of now. Why are the Indian market seeing selling? Well, we have more number of earnings misses than hits. And at least the U.S. market, you're getting a couple of pops. Uh, General Motors was up uh, overnight. You had Philip Morris as well. There was up. Both of them were up close to around 10%. So I think the bulls would like to see one of those big earnings speeds. That's what will change mood a little bit. So that's, uh, you know, the earnings misses have outweighed uh, the, the beats. FI selling $10 billion in October so far. Well, that's uh, clearly a painful point. And we have had a heady run. So post that heavy, heady run, there is some money being taken off the table. What do the FIs do yesterday? They lighten positions, both on the long as well as on the short side. What do the clients do? Yesterday, after a while, they added more short positions in comparison to the long positions. Though on an absolute basis, the FIs, they continue to remain net short with more than one and a half lakh contracts on the short side. While the clients, though yesterday, you know, you had the uh, long position that came down from 2.3 lakh contracts, it came down to around 2.2 lakh contracts, but that's still a net long position that you have on the index futures. The PCR, very important. That could be a technical indicator that you'll want to track very closely. It's come down to 0.73. 
at around 0 0.65, 0 0.66, we have seen that the markets do see a bit of a bounce because the call writing gets a little bit too aggressive. And in yesterday's trading session, that's precisely what happened. 24,500, 24,600, 24,700 call. All of them did see a fair bit of uh, aggressive writing that we saw. The nifty levels we're looking at yesterday was a weak session, particularly towards the end of trade, because we ended below that 100 DMA. So now we've breached a crucial barrier. The next support comes in at around this 24,000 odd mark. But in case we do see a bounce, you'll want the nifty to go ahead and breach this 100 DMA. What about the Nifty Bank? That as well has broken a lot of those barriers, the 20, 50, and 100 DMA. So in case we see a bounce, I think you'll have to keep an eye out on the 100 DMA, then the 50, and then the 20. And I think today, at some point of time, we are going to see a bounce on the low point of the day, and the Nifty Bank could be the one that's leading the way. It plays out the weekly expiry as well. A few stocks have come out of the FNO Bank, so you'll keep an eye out on them as uh, always. The list comes up for you on the screen. You have Granules, IDFC Bank, Sale, as well as Hindustan Copper. So we'll keep an eye out on all these stocks. All right, uh, Nigel, thanks very much uh, for that. So keep an eye and, uh, uh, you know, uh, bounce, uh, the durable bounce, the bounce actually will take it, right? I mean, we'll see if it's durable or not. But let's just get you some more opinion here. This is Sunil Call of Goldman Sachs who thinks a large price correction in the market is less likely given support from domestic flows, but markets could time correct over the next three to six months. Consequently, they've tactically lowered Indian equities from overweight to neutral in the Asia EM allocations, they've revisited the, the Nifty 12-month target of 27,000, uh, which, which implies a 9% upside, while the three-month target of 24,500 and the six-month price target of 25,500, which align with the range-bound or neutral view. Goldman is overweight autos, telecom, insurance, real estate. They've downgraded cyclicals like industrials, cement, chemicals, and financials.